The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I've said a few crazy stories over the years, but this one, wow, this one is really something wild. But I have to tell you, I would never have the guts to say this story, not for the fact that I heard it from Reb Shlomo Levenstein. He's a great Talmud Chacham from Eretz Yisrael. They nicknamed him the Magid of Bnei Brak. And I heard the story straight from him. And he told, he says that he actually checked out the story straight away. Rabotai, open your hearts. You have to hear this. See what it means. See what it means when you ask the words of Talmidei Chachamim. What they say they mean and those words are Kayam La'ad. There's a rabbi in the outskirts of Bnei Brak by the name of Rabbi Yosefi. He's the rabbi of the Persians. He gives shiurim to the Persian community on the outside of Bnei Brak. Every Wednesday night, Rabbi Yosefi gives a shiur. And one Wednesday night, right after, one of the Talmudim came up to the rabbi and said, Rabbi, listen, I got a really good friend. He just finished the army. He's chiloni. He's not religious. But it's worse than that. It's not just that he's not religious. He's kofer. He doesn't believe in God at all. Please, rabbi, could you talk to him? I really want this guy to be Jose Betruva. Maybe if you speak to him for a few minutes, maybe you can give him the right words, the right answer, the right message to all his questions. You can turn him on. Rabbi Yosef, he says, okay, no problem, bring him. He says, well, Rabbi, that's, that's the problem. Uh, he has this thing with shuls. He's a little bit nervous to walk into one. He kind of has an issue. He feels like if he walks into a shul, the air in the shul is going to do something to him. He's, he's, um, he's not walking into the shul. But he's right now outside the shul, sitting in a car in a parking spot. Rabbi, would you mind going out there and sitting in the car with him and talking to him? Rabbi Yosef, he said, okay, I'll go. He goes outside. And sure enough, in front of the shul, he sees a car parked with an Israeli guy sitting there. So Rabbi Yosef, he comes into the car. Before the rabbi can even open his mouth, before he says a word, right away, this Israeli guy turns to the rabbi and says, Harav, tochiach li, prove to me, sheyesh elokim ba'olam, that there's a God. Whoa. Rabbi Yosef, he looks at him and says, Seder, no problem. That's it. That's easy. Of course I'll, of course I'll prove to you that there's a God in the world. Rabbi Yosef, he looks the man in the eye. He says to the Israeli soldier, did you ever hear about Moshe Rabbeinu? He says, yeah, yeah, I heard about Moshe Rabbeinu, of course. He says, do you know? That Moshe Rabbeinu grew up in the palace of Paro. And then, Vayigdal Moshe. When he got older, he went out. He went out to his brethren, to Am Yisrael. And he began to help them. And he began to work with them in the fields. And after a while, Moshe Rabbeinu was part of the Sheabud. One day, Moshe Rabbeinu sees that there's an Egyptian taskmaster that's whipping a Jew. Moshe Rabbeinu runs up. He grabs the Egyptian and he kills him. Miracle happens. Ground opens up. Swallows in the body of the Egyptian taskmaster. Moshe Rabbeinu looks in both directions. He sees the coast is clear. Nobody saw. He's in the clear. Little did he know that two people, Rishayim, hurts to say of our people, went and was Malshin and told on him to Paro. When Paro heard that Moshe Rabbeinu killed the Egyptian taskmaster, says Rabbi Yosefi, Quickly, he arrested Moshe, brought Moshe in front of him to the palace. And it was at that moment that Paro put out his judgment. Kill him and cut off his head. At that moment, says Rabbi Yosefi to the Israeli soldier, they tied Moshe Rabbeinu's hands behind his back. They laid him down on a large rock. They took Moshe Rabbeinu's head and bent it all the way down so the back of his neck would protrude outward as far as possible. Like this, when the executioner comes with the sword, the sword would be able to make a clean cut. It was at that moment the executioner came. He took out the saif, he took out the sword, raised the sword, and as he's bringing the sword down on the neck of Moshe Rabbeinu, says Rabbi Yosefi, Hashem made a miracle! He made Moshe Rabbeinu's neck turn into shayish, turn into marble. When the sword hit the marble of Moshe Rabbeinu's neck, it bounced right back up onto the executioner and killed the executioner. Says the Midrash, at that moment, Moshe was able to get away and he ran off to Midian. 
At that minute, Rabbi Yosef, he turns to the Israeli soldier. No! What do you see? If there wasn't a Hashem in the world, how in the world could you explain Moshe Rabbeinu's neck turning to marble and saving his life? You see from here, my friend, that there's a God. And even if Cherev Chada, a sharp sword, Munachat al Tzavarosh al Ben Adam, that's coming on the neck of a person, Al Titya'esh min harachamim, never give up hope that God's mercy won't kick in at the last second and save you. And he saved Moshe. Tell me, my friend, says Rabbi Yosefi. You see, there's a God. I proved it to you. Otherwise, how could Moshe's neck turn to marble? This Israeli guy looks at Rabbi Yosefi and he bursts out laughing. Listen to this. He comes and tells me this story about Moshe Rabbeinu and his neck turning to marble. And that's the proof that there's a God. That's your proof, Rabbi? I don't believe in no Moshe Rabbeinu. I don't believe in no neck turning to marble. And I don't believe in God. What, what, what are you proving to me? What are you telling me? The guy was laughing hysterically. Literally, he looked at the rabbi as a joke. Rabbi Yosef, he says, okay. Im lo as lo. Okay. He picks himself up from the car, walks out from the car and leaves. That was it. Gentlemen, you think that's where the story ends? Oh, open your hearts, you have to hear this. We all know that in the Israeli military, after they serve a certain amount of time, they give them off a year or two chofesh, and they actually fly them out to anywhere in the world they want. This particular soldier, starting his year of chofesh of vacation, asked to go to Japan. There in Japan, after a very short while, hanging out with the wrong people, he eventually started having dealings with the Japanese Mafia. Little by little, as an Israeli soldier, who's an expert in survival, who was trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat, he was perfect. He fit into the Japanese Mafia in a great way. And they actually started to start trusting him. One time, the Mafia boss of the Japanese gave this Israeli guy a large amount of money to deliver to the other side of town, to an address. This Israeli guy, when he looks inside the pouch, he sees so much money, he couldn't resist. So he made up some funny excuse that he lost the money and he kept it for himself. Now, you don't steal from the mafia. Everybody knows you don't steal from the mafia, for heaven's sake. But he did, thinking that he's going to outsmart them. When the Israeli mafia boss finds out that this Israeli guy, when the Japanese mafia boss finds out that this Israeli guy stole the money, he sent people out looking for him and after a month of hiding, they found him. And they bring him back to the Japanese mafia boss. The mafia boss says, So, do you have anything to say for yourself? He says, No. If that's the case, you stole from me? That's death. Nobody steals from me. If that's the case, he turns to one of his henchmen, Bring a knife. We're going to cut his head off right now to show everybody you don't steal from the mafia. At that minute, they grabbed the Israeli, tied his hands behind his back. They laid him down flat completely on a table. They took his head and they bent it all the way down so the back of his neck would protrude as far outwards as possible. At that moment, the executioner walks in holding a long Japanese ninja sword. No, that's a joke. But holding a long sword comes and brings the sword up on the neck of this Israeli guy. And at that second, suddenly, it hits the Israeli guy on the table. Rabbi Yosefi! I can't believe this. This was the conversation I had a year ago with the rabbi in Bnei Brak. He told me about Moshe Rabbeinu. He told me that Moshe Rabbeinu was put in this exact position. And they pulled his head down. And his neck was standing out. He told me that at that moment Hashem made a miracle and turned his neck to marble. He told me that Afilu Cherev Chadam Munachat Al Tzavarosh Al Adam Al Tityaesh. Hashem could still save you. At that minute, it all came flooding back to this guy. I can't believe it. I'm in the position of Moshe at this second. Suddenly, the guy closes his eyes and he screams, Hashem, the way you saved Moshe Rabbeinu, if you really exist, save me. And if you save me, I'll go back to Israel. I'll go back to Rabbi Yosefi and I'll be Jose Betruva. At that minute, the executioner brings this knife up. He's about to bring it down on the neck of the Israeli soldier. The door of the room opens and in walks the wife 
of the Japanese mafia boss. And she looks and says, wait, this guy, the Israeli, you're killing him? Stop! She stopped everything. You can't kill him. Remember a few years ago, there was an earthquake in Japan? My son fell into a ditch as the earthquake was happening. And this Israeli guy jumped into the ditch and saved my son. You know what they say when you do a favor to the mafia. A favor to the mafia is a favor forever. I don't care what he did and how much money he stole. He sold. He saved my son's life. Take him off the table. They took him off the table. They untied him, put him in a taxi, and sent him straight to the airport. He got on the first plane back to Israel, gets into Ben-Gurion, taxi to Bnei Brak, comes running into Rabbi Yosef Yishul, hugs the rabbi, screaming and crying, bring me a pair of tefillin! I want to say Shema Israel." And then when he told the rabbi the entire story, he says, look, Hashem saved me. The mafia boss's wife walks in. She says that I, three years ago, saved her son. <laughs> I was in Japan only for one year. Open miracles. Open miracles. Open miracles. Aye, but at the moment, when Rabbi Yosef, he was talking to the man to try to convince him of Hashem, I ask you, if a guy would come and ask you, prove to me that there's a God in the world, would you have told him the story about Moshe Rabbeinu's neck turning to marble? Did you ever hear someone use that as a hochacha, that there's a Hashem in the world? But yes, because Rabbi Yosef believed that if the rabbis say it, it is 150% true. And when you come and speak and ask a rabbi his advice, Hashem puts into the rabbi's mouth the right words to say at times, the rabbi himself doesn't even realize how true and how far those words will go. Therefore, no matter how Hashem Shamaim you are, no matter how sure of yourself you are, no matter how pure your intentions are, on every step we take in life, Da'at Torah, we must ask. Unlike the Mikoshesh, that was Hashem Shamaim, but nonetheless it resulted in tragedy, Chorban and Galut, we're going to continue to stick and ask our rabbis and ask our rabbis every step. And Bore Olam will bless us with the right words. Thank you for listening, guys. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.